All right, Dave, number five. Number five. My number five game, uh, favorite games of 2022 is Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. We've covered it on this show a lot. I think we had a whole review on it, actually. We, yep, one of our only game reviews on it. Yeah. We should change that. We like really should. Year. We yeah. should have actual full reviews. Well, maybe next time you should play more games. Maybe, maybe you should. I mean, yeah, you play more than me because you only had no other side. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, but yes, Lego Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. It's a nice family-friendly version. It's not that the other the actual movies are not family-friendly. They are. But this is one you can play. And there's Legos. And there's funny jokes and memes. Yeah. Yeah. It's solid. <laughs> it's good. It's a lot of fun. I like. I. I. I really. They. They. They were really talking in the development cycle. They were. They were really hyping up how, the, you know, the exploration in the game. And honestly, they. They knocked it out of the park. Oh yeah. It was, I, it I was. was I'm, I'm still like blown away by how by the exploration in that game. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, Lego Star Wars number five, number four for me. We're talking Metal Hellsinger. Now. As you all know, I, I love a good a good shooter game. You do? I do. I like I like a, I like a Doom every now and then. I like a Quake. I, I never would have guessed. It. I like uh, a shooter. Rage. <laughs> I was expecting that to go, but I love shooters. Metal Hellsinger. At you here. I love shooters and I love rhythm games and Metal Hellsinger. They're like that. Yeah. That, that's that's their whole their their whole their whole mission statement. It's a shooter where you have to play to the beat of a song. And dang if they they didn't go all out on the music. You guys know we nominated that for our best OST in our in the DC Emmys Awards show. Go check that out right now. Yeah, it's it's out. Yeah. Nerd. Um because they, they got like full on like established artists. To, to, to play on these tracks. And yeah. Like, God, off the top of my head, singer of Refuse, singer of Dark Tranquility, singer of Ginger, singer of... Trivium. Trivium. System of a Down. System of a Down. The second singer of Arch Emini, Alyssa White. Oh, Luz. it's you lose whatever. I don't know. And I feel like there's one more we're missing that's it. really big. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's star-studded. Yeah, and it's, it's good. It is admittedly a little... So it's a li it takes a bit getting used to because you know, any other shooter you can just you know Blah. spray and pray exactly, but with Metal Hellsinger you gotta be a little a little, a little conservative. You gotta bum 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 or bum bum depending on what weapon you're using because they got reload times and those those are the ones that really that really kind of th threw me off. I'm like oh I gotta wait I can't just I gotta. So that took a little getting used to, but it's still a lot of fun. And once you get a hang, get a hang of that combat, it is supremely satisfying. Um, only thing I really don't like about it is that the boss fights kind of they're, they're not they're, they're, they're not that great. I mean, they re they they pretty much reuse the same fight over and over again, and the same song over and over again, which is a little disappointing. Um, other than that, it's really cool. I I, I love the the design aesthetic. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a great looking game. And yeah. yeah, number four. All right, number three. This is six. Three. Uh, gotta give it, give it to Gigabash. Uh, I mean, people have been clamoring for you know remakes of the Pipeworks Godzilla trilogy, which is all fine and good. Strong Monster Melee, great game, Save the Earth, great game. Unleashed, not so great game because it was on the Wii and we used the terrible motion controls. That's okay. Um, but Gigabash, Giga and there, there have been spiritual successors in the past, but I feel like Gigabash is the one that's really went above and beyond. And that's not, and that, that is not even because they, they just released the DLC with a bunch of Godzilla characters. I'm which, just saying, which was a good selection of Godzilla selection. characters, by the way. Yes. Uh, Godzilla, Destroya, Kiryu, and Gigan. Good choices. Very good choices. Um, but no, Gigabash is just, has just really hit that kind of over-the-top, kind of goofy arena kaiju brawler for me. And it might, it, it's probably because the art style is really great. The music is just phenomenal. 
phenomenal in that game. We should have nominated that for, for best OST now that I think about it. But um, it got woolly. It got, it's, it's got woolly. It's got woolly. And if, if, if you know, you know. Um, and admittedly, I'm not good at fighting games of any kind. <laughs> Shame. But there's it, there's just something about it where it's like this. The fighting in this is is just real. It's it's pretty simple. You only got like a handful of moves that you can, if you're good enough, you can chain them together. I'm yeah. not. But it, it's just really satisfying when you when you start going to town on on an enemy and just oh, I'm actually doing pretty good. Granted, it's it's still a little difficult, and again, that might just be me being not good at the game, but it's just a lot of fun. I, 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 I Giga Bash has been on my radar ever since it was announced, and I'm I'm glad to say that it this it exceeded expectations. Really, number two, and then, you know what? The, I, I I initially this was going to be a little different, but I I decided to to not go with the obvious pick, so I switched two and one around, so this might become a surprise, but number two is God of War Ragnarok. A <laughs> loser! <laughs> um, I feel like I don't have to say that much about it, because everyone and their mother has played it at this point, but no I, love, I love God of War 2018, and I was, when they announced God of War Ragnarok, I knew it was going to be good. Um, Bear McCreary was back, everyone was back, different director, which Kind of gave me a little, you know, I was a little hesitant, but uh, the last time I was uh, worried about a new director coming in after the first game, or first anything really, was the latest Planet of the Apes trilogy. So from Rise to Dawn, and then that ended up being better. Dawn ended up being better than Rise. And funnily enough, the same thing happened here. I think Ragnarok's a lot better than 2018 in a lot of ways. Uh, the combat feels a lot tighter. Uh, the story, while it's a little longer, that's only because they didn't want to do a trilogy, so they just made a longer game, which that's that's fine. Um, I think the story, the, a lot of the characters have a lot more depth to them. Um, if you played the game, you probably know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into spoilers here. And it's, and I feel like I'm, I, I, I don't know if it's because the combat's a lot tighter than the last one, but I feel like I'm playing better, which is something, because I really wasn't that great at 2018. That one last I played it, but I feel I did a lot better in Ragnarok. Um, yeah, it's just it's, it's it's dang good. Does it deserve every single award ever? Nah, yeah, not really. But Bam McGreer definitely deserved that award. That's all I'll say. Number two. All right. Number one, my game of the year. I talked about it on the show earlier. It is Faith, the Unholy Trinity. I gotta say, like when I talked about this on the show a couple months ago, I had only played chapter one out of three. Now I have completed it. I, I've done everything, all the endings, all the notes. The, I only have one trophy missing, and that's to go through marathon mode. So all three chapters back to back, no deaths, and all good endings. I can probably do two out of those two of those things. I there, there's no way I'm gonna be able to play that game deathless. I'm sorry, Airdorf. There's that's just not happening. Um, <laughs> but the, the the good ending, like the true ending for chapter three really, really solidified Faith as my game of the year. It's just, I mean, chapter three in general. Uh, the thing is, chapter one was made a couple years ago. Chapter two was made a, like a year or two after that. And then chapter three just came out this year. Uh, and you can really see the progression in game development through those chapters. You know, chapter one is very short. It's very to the point. Chapter two kind of opens up, and then chapter three like just blows you out of the water with with some of the puzzles and like the optional boss fights, and it's legitimately incredible. Like like the elevator, everything with the elevator. No, there's no seventh floor, all that kind of stuff. That that stuff's incredible. Like that that was legitimately. Just, just an incredible piece of, of storytelling and game design, I think. And I want to say I probably would have figured that out on my own, but just because I was going for the completion, I, I think I used to guide. Shh, it's okay. You animal! I know. I, hey, I've said it before. I, I use guides after my blind playthrough. Okay. Specifically after my blind. No, not, not before. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not that much of a... 
of, of, of a creature. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I love it. It's it's despite being such a simple game, like like control wise and even visual wise, it is still one of the more effective horror games I've played in a long time, and that's that's definitely due to the. Um, the nature of the rotoscope cutscenes. I mean, that's that's uh, that's like one of the one of the coolest things I've seen in a horror game for a while is those rotoscope cutscenes. Yeah.